Well, good evening. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. The River Bend Pentecostals from the Keene household. I uh, certainly wasn't expecting to have to go online this quickly, but uh, uh, here we are. Hope everyone's staying safe and uh, staying off the roads as much as possible. We want to remind you that uh, if uh, you're unable to get out and about, just uh, holler at us and uh, we'll uh, come help you. And if you need to go somewhere, we're, we're, we're at your service uh, during this time as long as it's uh, where we can get and uh, uh, that the roads and the conditions aren't so bad that we can't get there. We, we want to let you know that we're available to help each and every one of you. Um, we uh, have several announcements tonight. Uh, the River Bend Kids Pizza Party that was scheduled for tonight uh, is obviously canceled, but it has been uh, rescheduled for next Wednesday night, same time and place. And I know some of the kids have already been reaching out to us, wanting to make sure that they have their pizza party. Well, they're going to have it. And as soon as the weather clears off, they're going to have it. I want to announce to you that we uh, yesterday uh, purchased an app for our phones. That is a River Bend Pentecostals app. Uh, it's uh, in the early stages yet. We're not ready for everyone to get it, but it's going to allow you to give. It's going to have a calendar. It's going to have directions to our church, notifications, a lot of different functions that it's going to provide. And we're really excited about that and look forward to uh, making that available to you. Um, we will tell you right now that unless something drastic happens, we'll, 10 o'clock Sunday morning, we'll have elements class. The adults will be in the family center. Uh, River Bend Ignited, which is our student ministry, will be in the River Bend Kids Room. And the River Bend Kids will be having their class in the sanctuary Sunday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. That is our Sunday school, for lack of a better word. And then at 11 o'clock, we will have our worship service. And uh, we certainly invite you to uh, join with us online. If not in-house, well, we've been having some tremendous services. The Spirit of the Lord has been moving in a mighty way, and we're very excited about what God is doing. Baptized one two weeks ago. We baptized three this Sunday. And the baptistry is sitting there ready. I was checking it earlier today, and it still kept the water pretty warm. We're ready to baptize somebody this Sunday. If you repent of your sins, you ask the Lord to forgive you. If you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, we, again, stand at your service to allow you to fulfill the call and the plan of God for your life. Um, the church tent cleaning team for this week is team number four, which is the Bobo family. Um, Ladies night, Tuesday night, is a pancake party, February the 16th. It's at 6.30. Bring your own drink, and that's still on the schedule as well. Uh, we want to let you know that Missouri District Camp Meeting, which is originally the Southeast Regional Camp, but it is the only one that is still on the schedule. The other three have been canceled, March 11th and the 12th at the Black River Coliseum in Poplar Bluff, same location as last year. And uh, I understand that... Uh, they, uh, we can be in there, social distancing. Poplar Bluff wants us there. Uh, the Missouri District wants to be there. So we're gonna have a great time. We encourage each of you to make plans to go with that. Uh, Missouri District Ladies Conference is always a highlight on the calendar of our ladies. April the 29th through the May the 1st at the Chateau on the Lake in Branson, Missouri. A Little bit different location, but you wanna certainly be making plans to do that. Then NAYC, North American Youth Congress, July the 28th, 29th, and the 30th in Indianapolis, Indiana, and it is going to be a tremendous time. I was fortunate enough to be there when it was in Indianapolis the last time. About 34,000 people filled that uh, 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 event center that they had there, and uh, it was an incredible night, and the uh, power of God moved, and, and it's something that we will not soon forget. We want to let you know that March 14th is our Spring Forward service. It's when we meet at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's the day we spring the clocks forward. We lose an hour, and it's kind of going to use it as a promotional service this year. There'll be no Sunday school classes. Just meet at 2 o'clock, and we're going to spring forward. We're going to launch ourselves into the, the uh, summer months, be just around the corner. 
and we're expecting a great revival, a lot of activities, a lot of things going on. Then February the 28th, Sunday, February 28th, Brother Glenn Massey will be ministering to us, and you certainly do not want to miss that. Again, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. I want to, us to pray before we get into the word of the Lord. We have a, a Bible study prepared for us tonight. I feel like the Lord has given us a word, maybe to deal with two or three things, but uh, some specific uh, concerns and issues and, and make sure that we maintain our momentum of revival. We are having uh, wonderful, wonderful services and we've got so many hungry souls that are reaching out to us and new folks watching with us online and, and we're so honored and grateful for that. But we're going to pray that right before we get into Bible study. We want to remember Brother McKinney, uh, Sister Virginia, Sister Barker, Sister Norman, Brother Dole Davis, uh, Sister Naomi, and all the Thatcher family. We want to pray for those that haven't been able to get out yet. And, and uh, I believe we need to pray that those who have taken this vaccine, I pray that it works. I pray that it works and we can get this virus out of here and uh, we can uh, experience the revival that God has for us. I'm ready to get started making plans for a new building because that's what we believe God's going to lead us to. And uh, so we want to pray. If you have any requests, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, we'll do our best to pray over them. But we believe in the power of prayer. And we believe God is going to hear and answer our prayers. Let's pray for our time together here as well. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this night. Thank you for your protective hand upon us. We thank you, Lord, for our warm houses to be in during this bad weather. Thank you, God, for this technology that allows us to go ahead and meet instead of having to cancel everything. I pray for the sick that we've called out, the request for the, the our elders in our church that are struggling with their health. And we pray, God, for everybody that's uh, uh, fighting the virus. We pray for everyone that uh, is struggling with getting out and getting active and involved with people. We pray, God, for our country. We pray for our leadership. We pray, Lord, for uh, a lot of this distrust and animosity to go away and people to come back together. I pray, Lord, for Israel, the peace of Jerusalem. I pray, God, that you will uh, uh, continue to bless out west the churches that are allowed to have service now. Pray that you give them a great revival and make sure everyone stays safe. And we believe, God, that you're going to bless us tonight in our time together. We give you praise, honor, and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. For whatever reason, I feel a little bit awkward uh, tonight. I haven't uh, met with you on the computer in a good little bit. and It feels a little awkward, but I'm excited about getting in the word of the Lord. Um, I'm going to probably not be real long tonight, but uh, do have several scriptures and several points we want to make it, try to encourage you and build your faith, and, and we believe that the power of the Holy Ghost is going to take us all the way through to fulfill our destinies and our purposes in the kingdom of God. Now, the enemy of our soul is Satan, the devil. He's our adversary, and he is, as powerful as he is, he is subject to the authority of God. However, he continually stalks and chases and connives and lies and tries everything he can to tear us down. As long as you live for God, the enemy is going to be after you. But 1 Peter 5 and 8 tells us to be sober, be vigilant, because our adversary, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And it is his will to destroy us. And the deterrent to all the lies and all the tricks of the devil and of hell is to know who you are, to know that you are a child of God, to know that you've been blood bought and that there's not a sin that the blood of Jesus can't wash you clean and make you whiter than snow. We have to know it beyond the shadow of a doubt who you are and especially who you are from heaven's perspective. I challenge each one of us tonight to use what we're given when we're weak, when we're fearful, wounded, discouraged, to take the tools, the scriptures that we've been given. I've taught this before, but I'm going to reiterate it again. In Matthew chapter number four, Jesus Christ gave us the perfect example to fight off the powers of hell, and that is to use the word of God. It is the most established, settled, powerful weapon we have. Heaven and earth will pass away, 
but my word will not pass away, the Bible says. We've got to believe this word of God standeth sure, and it is what we've been given. Now, while we're filled with the Spirit, we're also in the Spirit or under the covering of the Spirit. John 14 and 20 says, And there, in that covering, filled with the Spirit, also in the Spirit, we have an assuredness. The Bible says in 1 John 4 and 4, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's just the way it is. That's not something that's going to happen. That is the way it is. The power of the Holy Ghost is greater than any power that hell has to bring against you. We have a hope that is set before us. And the Bible says it is our anchor. It is the anchor of our soul. Hebrews 6, 18 and 19. When the winds of sorrow, the winds of change, the turbulence in the world begins to rock and roll our life, if you please, we have our hope is our anchor, our hope in Jesus Christ, and that he is going to keep us, lead us, guide us. We have an anchor. you got to hold on to that. Ephesians 2 and 6 says he's made us sit together in heavenly places. And that is not hard to fathom nor see when you realize and experience. I challenge you. I encourage you. I implore you. I beseech you. Just as soon as you feel comfortable, come to the house of God. We have a wonderful praise and worship and the spirit moves and you don't want to miss it. It's been incredible and it's only getting better. There's so many great things that are happening. That is heavenly places. The Holy Ghost is the earnest of our inheritance. It is a little taste of heaven. He has made us to sit together in heavenly places. And the promises of God, according to 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, are in him yea and in him amen. He reminded me again today, and I want to let you know it excited me so much. I went to prayer, and I was struggling in prayer. It doesn't always come easy. I was struggling in prayer, struggling to stay in focus, keeping my mind focused, and, and I just kept on praying. I kept on praying, and I, I used my prayer list and the things that keep me grounded, and it wasn't very long until I began to feel the Spirit moving around me, and I began to be overwhelmed with the motion and with the power of the Holy Ghost because he promised I'll never leave you nor forsake you and there's going to be many times the enemy's going to tell you you pray for five minutes and don't feel anything the enemy's going to tell you maybe the Lord's not here tonight maybe he's not answered tonight maybe he's not with you tonight but the word of God says the promises of God are in him yea and in him amen to the glory of God so he is bound to keep his word we've got to stand upon the word of God. And of course, the scripture that uh, that we hold on to that always blesses us is his strength is made perfect or complete in our weakness. When we're having trouble, his strength is made perfect. But I want to take us to a particular passage of scripture. As a matter of fact, it was one of our scriptures for elements class this past Sunday. But uh, the Lord led me here uh, yesterday, I believe it was, and uh, I, I, w I wanted to use it to go a different direction. But as I said earlier, I began to pray and the Lord began to deal with me and, and lead me here. And uh, I just really feel like that I need to uh, minister to you from Romans chapter 8, verses 15 and 16. Romans 8 and 15 says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption which whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now, the actual Greek rendering of Romans 8 and 15 says, for you did not receive a spirit of bondage that returned you to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship by whom we cry, Abba, Father. This is, of course, referring to the Roman church and, and to the, the, the Christians at Rome having been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And, and I... I uh, um, very strongly want to emphasize that the receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the gift of the Holy Ghost is for whosoever will. Whoever wants it can receive it. He's not hiding from us. He's not the God that's far off, but the God that's hand at hand. But I got to let you know, when you're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you are not uh, uh, 
joining a, a church, you are born into the body of Christ. And there is not an umbrella of fear that we're living under. When the, the Jewish people lived under the law, there was always the fear of failure because with the failure, there was going to be a punishment and there's going to be a judgment. But the Lord is very clear through the Apostle Paul that we did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. There is no room for fear in living for God. I want tonight under the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost to, to eradicate the spirit of fear from our people, from our homes, from our church, from our minds, from every area that it affects us. The spirit of fear has no place in a blood-bought, born-again child of God. We have got to know Know who we are, and we've got to have this spirit, this this scripture, to be able to testify for us and on our behalf, because we've got to know we're not living in fear, we are not living in bondage. But the power of the Holy Ghost is to loose us. It is to loose us into our destiny, and our destiny is to join in with laboring with the Lord, labor together with Him, and seeking and saving that which was lost. He's given us the word of reconciliation, which means the power of the Holy Ghost flows through us and works through us, uh, that everyone we meet might be drawn back uh, to the Lord through the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, it is for whosoever will, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. So many people are afraid to to go to church and to try to live for God because they think that it's uh, it's inhibiting or it's restricting but you, that is so far from the truth that's what the devil wants you to think and the lies that he tells is you can't do this you can't do this you can't do this but the word of God says we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but notice what it says but you have received the spirit of adoption. I looked up that word adoption. We all know in the general sense what adoption means, but that word in the Greek literally means divinely adopted. And the literal meaning of it is placed. And that means we were specifically chosen by God to be where we are. I believe it's the 17th chapter of Acts that says that he has formed the bounds of our habitation and the times of our habitation, but we're not just placed in a spot. We're not just set in a spot somewhere, but we're divinely appointed as children of God. We are representatives of Jesus Christ, Lord God Almighty, here on earth. We do not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be bound up. You uh, are not a servant of fear, but you have received the spirit of of adoption, which means when you are filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that you are a chosen child of God, that you have every right, every privilege of a blood child of God. We are been placed exactly where he wants us and whereby the spirit of adoption gives us the privilege to cry, Abba, Father. Now, look at this. You're a child of God, and no one or anything can change that. You're not going to be kicked out for giving the wrong answer in Bible study. You're not going to be kicked out for saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing, making a mistake, or even doing something stupid. We do not have to live for God in fear. We are his children. We belong to him. Now, I'm in no way, shape, form, or fashion uh, declaring that once you're saved, you're always saved because I, I do not believe that, nor does the Bible back that up. But you are a child of God, and no matter how far you've gotten away from him, I want you to know he knows who you are, and he is willing to accept you back. Luke, the 15th chapter, is the perfect example of that. Uh, but we got to realize we, if, we're, if you and I are living for God in fear, Something's wrong in our life. Something's wrong. We've got to get rid of fear. Fear has no place in a relationship with our Father, our Heavenly Father, who chose us. He chose us. He adopted us. We do not have to live for God in fear. We are His children. I want to bring this point out to you. It says, the end of 8, eight and 15, 
whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Lord gave me a revelation, and I was preaching this several years ago, uh, using this scripture in another Bible study. The Lord gave me a revelation. I looked up, uh, I've even heard it preached, that the word Abba in 8 and 15 is, oh Lord, it is the word for father that's born on the lips of an infant. It's a word for father that's born on the lips of a baby. In our vernacular, it would be perhaps as uh, far back as Dada, certainly as Daddy. I want to tell you, I don't care how long or how far away you were, I want you to know the relationship with God that's a daddy relationship. I did not know my daddy as an authority figure. I did not know my daddy as the boss. I didn't know my daddy as the disciplinarian. I first knew him as daddy. He was my protector. He was my safety. He was my rock. And we have got to feel the Holy Ghost right now. We have got to know him as daddy. We cannot try to introduce people, babies, to him as the father, as the disciplinarian, as the security, as the authority. It's not a respect relationship. It is a strictly love relationship that I have come into a relationship with God and I can call him Abba. I can call him Abba. He's go he is my father, and I'm going to learn that respect, and I'm going to learn that authority, and I'm going to learn what his standards are, what his boundaries are in living in his house. But none of that's going to matter to me if I do not first know him as daddy. That's where I built that love and that respect. That's where I was able to lay my head down on his shoulder. That's where I was able in my house, and, and just excuse me for being just a little personal, but if I had a bad dream, I could go crawl in the bed with daddy and what I would say to him is daddy can I lay my head on your muscle and he would hold his arm up to the side and let me lay my head on his muscle and right then I knew everything was okay please 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 uh, I implore our church and all of the people that are watching me if you don't know him as daddy he is that he is that. People don't, don't talk about that, and people don't uh, 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 portray that image of God Almighty. They, they portray him as the commandment man and the thou shalt not man. But first and foremost, he is our daddy. He is Abba. Romans 8 and 15, Abba. We're going to know him as father. We're going to respect him, and we're going to learn to be led by the Spirit. That's the father relationship. That's the curfews, and, and that's the you don't go here, and you don't go with this one, and you don't do that. We're going to get all of that, but n none of that's going to come to pass if we first don't know him as daddy. If we first don't know him as the one that, that kisses my boo-boos and they get better. we got to know him as the one that loves us. Then you'll know him as father. Then you'll know him as the senior one, the respect, the authority, and security as he leads us to maturity. But know him first. Come to the house of God and allow him just to wrap his arms around you. Allow him to just take you away for a few moments from the hustle and the bustle and the cares and the pressures of life and just Sit on his proverbial knee and let him bounce you. Let him put his arms around you and get that love relationship, which gives birth to respect, which gives birth to security and gives birth to authority as he leads us to maturity. That's who we are. We are his children. We are his children. And the Bible says that spirit of adoption allows us to call him daddy, Abba, it's the word for father born on the lips of a baby. And then it says, verse number 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. I really hope I can share with you what I feel like this is telling us. We can't have a relationship with God that's not spiritual. It is the witness of the Spirit 
that validates us as children of God. That's why we got to be born again. And it's an experience that carries with it validation where I know that I'm born of the water and of the spirit. The spirit witnesses. The spirit testifies with my spirit. Once you feel the baptism of the Holy Ghost, there's not a doubt in your mind that something supernatural has taken place within your body. It's not just the goosebumps on the outside, but it is a witness of the Spirit. You look at that if you're reading it with me in verse number 16, it says the Spirit, that has a capital S on it, which when you see it in uh, the King James Version with that capital S, it's talking about the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and it testifies with our spirit. There is a connection with our spirit that says we're the children of God. It's a familiar spirit. It's a beautiful spirit. It's uh, Somebody said the other day they feel peace when they come to the house of God. They feel hope when they come to the house of God. Sometimes you don't really know what you're feeling, but you know you didn't work it up. You didn't make it up. Nobody's touching me. Nobody's doing anything. I just feel the power of the Holy Ghost. It is a witness of the Spirit. It's the actual Spirit of God that testifies with our spirit, that agrees with our spirit, that says, this is my child. We are the children of God. Today, as I was praying, I was praying at the church, and I was walking my little thing that I do, and uh, I was, uh, after a little while, when you don't feel anything, you almost feel like you automatic. well, there's a problem with me. I need to start repenting. Sometimes the Lord just lets us grow a little bit and lets us keep pressing a little bit because I promise you, if you keep pressing and you keep praying, you keep calling on that name and you keep reading the Bible, I promise the Spirit will testify. You don't, oh Lord, you don't need somebody else to come along and say you're doing good. You don't need somebody else to come along and pat you on the back. But there's a witness of the Holy Ghost. There is a witness of the power of God. And it beareth witness with our spirit. It's a spiritual thing. Because you see, in the garden, when Adam and Eve sinned, their spirit broke relationship with God. And they were separated. But when we get filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we are reconciled again. And it's that same gathering in the garden in the cool of the day that the Spirit of God testifies. There's a camaraderie. There's a relationship. There's a togetherness. And it's manifest itself within me that we are the children of God. It testifies. This is my child. This is my child. Adopted. Chosen divinely placed and full air. We do not have to live for God in fear. Afraid that we might fail, that we may not be good enough, that we may not live up to his expectations. We are his children. He is our father. But first, he's daddy. We've been adopted, divinely chosen. And I've preached out of this verse and talked out of this verse I'm about to read to you as I close, but I I want you to, Romans 8, 15, and 16, I want you to also commit this one down. Write it down, 1 John chapter 4, verse number 16. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. I want you to take back the Romans 8, 15, and 16 especially. An encounter with the Spirit lets you know He loves you. Especially when you feel the presence of the Lord and you know you didn't deserve it. You know you didn't earn it. You know that you have been more of a wayward son than one at home, but yet His presence still came down and visited you. We've got to know and believe, got to know and got to believe that He loves us. Because God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. That's where verse 17, herein is our love made perfect. And perfect love allows you to have boldness, 
confidence in the day of judgment or the day of crisis, the day of a decision, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Gone are the days when we try to scare you into living for God. Gone are the days when you have to be manipulated or tricked or play games because we're so scared you're going to be lost. You are, we are the children of God, and he loves us. He loves us. He loved us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. For you did not receive a spirit of bondage that returns you to fear. You don't have to sit with your bags packed. You don't have to be a child that worries whether they're going to have a place to sleep or whether they're going to have food to eat in the kingdom of God and in the family of God. He's going to take care of you. Let him love you. Let the church love you. That's just God loving you through us. It's not because we're good. It's not because we're so uh, uh, benevolent or so. It's because the love of God flows through us. He wants to love you. He wants to build a relationship with you. That of daddy. Nothing made me feel better. Makes me feel better to this day. Nothing. Now that I have my granddaughter, I get to feel it a little bit, but I'm not her daddy. She has a good daddy. And she has a peepaw too. But when she smiles at me, takes me back to when mine were little. And a child can make you feel like the king of the world. Imagine what it does to God Almighty when you let him love you but more so when you love him back. When I would pull up to the door, the house we used to live, it was a shack. What I'm about to tell you to let you know it was a shack because I'd get out of the truck out in the old gravel driveway and I could hear Tripp's little feet come pitter-pattering across the floor. He ran to the door, hollering, Daddy's home, Daddy's home, Daddy's home. I want to tell somebody tonight that's uh, the Lord's looking for that call from you. He's looking for that cry from you. He is God. He is worthy of high respect and high honor and high obedience and submission. But he first wants to love you. He doesn't want to have a relationship built on fear. He doesn't want a relationship built on uh, uncertainty and as if he's the lesser of two evils. He wants a relationship with you built on love, the love he has for you. we got to know it. You did not receive the spirit of bondage, again, into fear, but you did receive the spirit of adoption, the spirit of sonship, the spirit of divine appointment, divine placement in the kingdom of God. Pray with us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, I believe that you've ministered to somebody tonight. I know this is a word that came from you and ministered to me today once again as I'm reminded that you love me and I can't make you not love me. And you died for me. You gave your life for me. And I believe, Lord, that there's a lot of folks that are realizing that you want to love them. And you're going to love them into maturity and you're going to love them into growth and you're going to love them into a reflection of your image. But you just want to love them. You want to build that relationship where they feel comfortable and they feel safe. They feel clean and they feel whole when they're in your arms. Let us all grasp a hold of that concept and let's nurture it and let's promote it that you are Abba, Father. I'm thankful for that blessing and that opportunity. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you Sunday morning. Thank you for joining us. We love all of you. Pray for us. Pray one for another. Don't forget to call us. Don't forget to call us if you need something. Milk or bread, we'll find it for you. God bless you. We love you.